For this stage of the knife, I have to quench it, and in order to make the knife as uh, hard yet as flexible as possible, I use a method of differential hardening, and uh, by doing so it also creates a line known as a Hammond, which will be a wavy line following basically this pattern of clay which I've put on. And the clay I use for this process is simply uh, this 3M fireblock sealant. Uh, I get this stuff just at Home Depot. It's like five bucks a tube and works great. It's fireproof up to like 1400 Fahrenheit and much higher. And then I simply apply the clay to the knife and brush it on with a little artistic paintbrush, make whatever pattern I please. The entire key to putting this clay on is to spread it as thinly as possible and you'd hardly need to go more than a sixteenth of an inch high at the thickest part. Uh, this clay is only to stop the water from touching the surface rather than actually completely insulating the blade. It'll also stay on a lot better when it is this thin. If the clay breaks off during the quench, uh, it'll be ruined. I'll show the techniques of the quench later. I'm about to begin the heat treating process of my clayed Damascus blade in order to create a Hammond. I just took this uh, blade out of a toaster oven that was set at 400 degrees for an hour so it hardened the clay very well and then I'm going to heat it in my coal fire up to critical temperature at which point it will be not magnetic and then quench it into this warming up can of brine right here for about three seconds take it right out of the can of brine edge quench it into my bucket of cold brine and then after a two to three second edge quench, I'll put it into a uh, can of oil until it is fully cooled the rest of the way. This way it'll stabilize the knife and hopefully no cracks will occur. All right, let's begin. At this point, the steel is non-magnetic, as you can see by the color here. I have to be careful to keep it at the constant temperature or else it will crack. I'm about to perform the quench. The blade has been held at critical for a few minutes here to make sure it's well and evenly heated. It is now time for the quench. Dun dun dun. The blade is now very quickly wire brushed off to remove any residual oils before being placed into a toaster oven for final tempering. After the quench, you can already see where the Hammond line will be appearing. This is after it's been wire brushed, and those uh, little peaks are simply just from the uh, soft steel underneath the little clay legs I put on the Hammond. It will now be put it is now put into the toaster oven for one hour at 350 degrees. This allows the blade to temper and gain some toughness and flexibility at a slight sacrifice of edge hardness. To begin polishing the Hammond, I uh, strap sandpaper over leather over wood to give a nice squishy surface in which to polish. I then spray WD-40 onto the sandpaper to make it wet enough to help cut the metal, like so. Uh, in order of the sandpapers I use, I use a belt sander to first polish the knife from 40 grit to 280 grit. From there, I then use 400 grit paper. That's what's on there right now. Then I progress to a 600 grit paper. Then an 800 grit paper. And then finally, for the 
highest polish I use 1500 grit and this is all I find necessary to polish up to anything higher than this is almost getting to overkill after 1500 grit I use a uh, etching solution to get the final pattern to be revealed the handle of the knife is made by first tracing the shape of the tang onto some wood and then taking a chisel and filing the wood away until you hollow out the shape of the tang. This is repeated on a second piece of wood. Then the two pieces of wood are glued or rather epoxied together and ground flat until they are able to fit the tang like so. The same is done already here for the blade of the knife and it simply fits like so. This is essentially the case when you put the two pieces together. The blade is now fitted with a hand guard which I took the liberty of pre-designing. It's simply a square of metal with a hole which I drilled then filed in the middle. This is designed to fit snugly, but not too snugly, over the blade, like so. Now when the handle is put on, it will form the typical Japanese tanto look that I was going for. So the knife has finally been finished and I think it turned out pretty well. And uh, it fits together really nicely with the sheath into one solid piece. That way it's sort of just like a sword that doesn't even look like a sword. It's not even not very intimidating. And it's nice and snug and won't shake. And as can be seen, there is a definite Damascus pattern as well as a Hammond line, which can be quite easily seen on the blade. In the camera, however, it doesn't show up quite as well. Now, those are some real Hammonds. Thanks for watching.